today on Real Life. Making right choices on One to One. The girls deal with the heavy topic of teen pregnancy on Today's Girls. Bishop Derek Greer shares about growing churches and the Grace Church worship team sings today on Real Life. He empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black Amen. with Terry and Anna Fry. Hello. Hi, Happy Anna. Wednesday. Well, it's good to see you, Anna. It's Wednesday. been a long time. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that this morning. Since, since well, Terry and I have been at the desk together, but right. it's been a long time since we've well, been here together. Now. I know. It's well, nice it's more like we're back. glad to see you here. Exactly. Well, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Listen, we are approaching Christmas like a freight train. Absolutely. Oh, like two weeks. Well, not, like let's not weeks, say a right? steam engine. A freight train just seems so serious. Stressful. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a, what's a better way? Like a mm. punk toy. Uh, <laughs> see, that sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds much more peaceful. Uh, are, are, you, are you getting ready at home? Mm. Are you getting ready for Christmas? I know you are. Mm. I know you are. Yeah. Two weeks until Christmas Eve. <gasps> right. Oh, when you Christmas say it that age. way, that's very frightening. Know, you know? My <laughs> children are so excited, right. counting down the days. Oh, mm -hmm. I remember that. We used yeah. to have an advent calendar and cu count down the days that way. That right. was always fun. Well, I'm so glad you said advent. That leads right into what I wanted to share, because okay. you guys have been asking people to share how they've been celebrating right. Christmas. Mm -hmm. and right. We've had this super fun ac Advent activity in oh, our house, cool. and I think they have a picture of it. There's my kids. <gasps> oh, I love Rebecca's kind of upside down on it, but is she a gymnast? Uh, yeah, she she wants to be. <laughs> but they're showing off our Advent poster with this activity, oh, look at that. Yeah. and oh, cool. it's so much fun. So every day we do this Advent activity that focuses on a character of the Christmas story, and this yeah. one is especially cool because it goes way back to King David, and talks oh. about. About, um, and Isaiah and mm -hmm. Micah and Zechariah mm -hmm. and talks about the prophecies in the Old That's Testament nice. and how they're fulfilled in the New Testament oh, with Jesus. Wow. And so my kids are at such a good age where they can comprehend more of the mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. about the Christmas story. And so we've had a blast. And it's that. great because it, it helps center what Christmas is all about. That's right. The preparation and, and the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's that's really the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Kids and presents. Well, that's secondary. It's not, I mean, it's supposed to be secondary, but, mm -hmm. secondary. you know, it, it's, um, it's just fun. We're, we're excited. We have um, our two children from college are going to be coming home this weekend. They are on the so way on Friday. I am oh, always looking forward to them all being, all for all of us to be together. Mm -hmm. Well, the but, Black family home changes when we're all there. And that's probably oh, true sure in your home, too. Yeah. The energy levels go yes. up. Uh -huh. The food bills go up. Absolutely. And all of the rattling of the house. You that's know, right. Just, I bet the joy level goes up. The joy though. level. Well, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun. That's right. A lot more conversations. It's, it's, if right. you're not used to being around a large family, mm -hmm. it can be very overwhelming sure. when you hear all the talk going on. We I can. think you two soak it up, though. Yeah, oh, I love it. I, I do. Know. I love yeah. the banter. It just brings well, a lot of joy. Well, as you know, Scripture is part of every morning's mm -hmm. program, every Time we open, we open mm -hmm. with the scripture. Let's go right to Acts 5, verse 31. The word says, Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Amen. That, that's mm -hmm. a promise of God's salvation mm -hmm. to Israel and to us as Gentiles through the giving of, the, of his son, Jesus. Amen. And as we go into the season, we go into the Christmas season, we need, and we said every day this month, every day as we go <laughs> towards the, uh, the, Christmas, the Christmas special, we have a special coming on. Absolutely. For you. Don't mark your calendars and don't miss it. And then we also have a New Year's Eve special. Mm -hmm. That's really, spe <laughs> our special is really special. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is yes. a special special. <laughs> special, special. And if you've, if you've been listening to Christian music, contemporary Christian music for a very long or for a while, you know who Phil Kagi is. Absolutely. And Phil is our special guest on, on New Year's Eve mm -hmm. as we count down and shout in 
the new year. We're going we're gonna to count down. And rather than the big apple falling or the ball falling, remember in, in Georgia, yes, it was the it's peach, peach. Yeah. the big yeah. peach falling. Mm -hmm. in, in, in Cornerstone land, we blow the shofar. So we're going to blow that shofar and then have communion together, kicking off 2015 with power and with praise and with worship mm -hmm. and with God's presence. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss that. It's mm -hmm. going to be a phenomenal time together as we go into this next year. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we also just want to remind you, too, that our prayer partners are always here to take your prayer requests and also to listen to your praise reports. We love to hear how God is working good things in your life, and we also want to hear just the different storms and trials that you might be going through. And we want to just mm -hmm. link arms with you and pray with you and just, um, just build your faith through the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, in yesterday's program, there was a word of knowledge about the a right knee being healed, and we had multiple people call in Absolutely. reporting that praise report right. yep. that God right. had healed mm -hmm. their, their right knee. Mm -hmm. And that was a, such a tremendous time of him speaking to somebody directly and then watching that happen. I know. that was It's just exciting to see what God's doing and what he can do in our right. lives. So tune in. This, this program is going to be the same. We're going to have the anointed word of God. We have a man of God coming on in just a few minutes. We're going to talk about what's going on mm. in his church and what God's doing in the ministry that he's placed in and the worship team. Terry's yeah, going to talk about I our worship team. I love music and I love yeah. especially worship. What a great way for us to begin our day. Why? listening to Grace Church worship team sing, Come, Let Us Adore Him. Amen.
Christ the Lord, what a glorious song. Oh, come, let us adore him. We give you praise and honor, dear Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and praise. What a tremendous song. We just are so grateful to have this group here today singing and sharing their love of Jesus with us. Now, do you have ever have trouble making decisions? And, and even when you make a decision, you worry if it was the right one? Yes. Author and speaker Karen Budzinski discusses making right choices in this week's One to One. Karen, it's so good to be back with you and talk more about marriage today. We're talking about choices, making right choices in our marriages. And so much in life really is about making the right choice or the wrong choice. One of the choices you talk about in your book is choosing to have a good attitude or a bad attitude. Right, that is one thing that you can pick, is whether you're gonna have a good attitude or a bad attitude. Yeah. Sometimes you can't change the circumstances, mm -hmm. you can't change the person, you can't change the day, you can't change the disaster, but you can choose to have a good attitude versus a bad attitude. Yeah. That's why we have differences of people that have gone through very trying times. For example, mm -hmm. I think of Corey Ten Boom during oh, right. the Holocaust right. or um, in the movie right. Life is Beautiful, the way that you look at something. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times the filter that you have on is mm -hmm. going to color the way that you see a situation and how you can get through it effectively. Mm -hmm. So what if somebody's more of a pessimist and it's hard for them mm -hmm. to look at the good side of things. How do they go about being more optimistic? Well, they're halfway there because they're seeing the glass half empty. Okay. Now they just have to, by choice and on mm -hmm. purpose, uh -huh. retrain their thinking okay. to see the glass, the part that's full. Mm -hmm. I always liken it to when you're walking along on a sidewalk, yeah. it's so great. But if you look closely, a lot of times you can see the little sparkly elements mm, in the sidewalk. True. And that goes along with one of your other uh, choices that you said is to look for the good and not for the bad. So mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I know um, one of my daughters was in a class that was giving such a negative attitude. So one day I brought a big bunch of irises into the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I had half of the classroom come up and look for the things that were right with the bouquet. Okay. I had the other half of the class come in and look for the things that were wrong about the bouquet. Uh -huh. And then I showed them, this bouquet didn't change. So it just depended on what you're looking for. Yeah. And that's why if we are negative thinkers, if we're mm -hmm. prone to think on the downside, a lot of times we're gonna be looking for things to reinforce what we already believe. Okay. And so we have to learn to change that thinking. Mm -hmm. We live in a very negative world. Absolutely. And when we work on purpose to start mm -hmm. changing the way that we think and what we're looking for, mm -hmm. it is possible to change those things. Yeah, right. Well, I think the biggest change is ourselves. Right. You know, and so in what your book shares about is if you're changing yourself, then that impacts your marriage. And so it's mm -hmm. a great, it's, a, it's just a great guidebook mm -hmm. for living and having a whole and healthy marriage. It really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And all your relationships, because the same relationship principles that will work in your marriage are going to work with your family and sure. with other people, your boss. It's being respectful of another person's individuality. Mm -hmm. God gives us a free choice, but sometimes we want to remake the people closest to us into what we think they should be. Mm -hmm. And we need to honor that God's given them a choice and learn to um, reach where they're at and be encouraging and loving. And that mm -hmm. alone is going to give you a platform in their life that will allow you to be more impactful anyways, mm -hmm. because they'll trust you. Right. Now, mm -hmm. one of the choices that stood out to me was we can choose to encourage ourselves or become discouraged. Mm -hmm. And I guess I think so much about how important it is to encourage our spouse, but you talk about choosing to encourage ourselves. You have to. Mm -hmm. I know emotions are very mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. And women's emotions can be like water, <laughs> go to the lowest point sometimes. Yeah. And you have to learn what David did. He came back and everything was plundered, mm -hmm. but he encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He didn't yeah. nurse his problems. He didn't rehearse them, mm -hmm. but he chose to 
reverse them. And right. I think that's powerful because yes. we all go through various struggles. We're mm -hmm. always going to go through struggles. Right. But, you know, we can encourage ourselves in the Lord and get mm -hmm. through those struggles and be safe on the other side of them. Yeah. And so he encouraged himself because I, I totally identify that you I cannot trust my emotions at times, you know, because right. I know that how I'm feeling is not really accurate, mm -hmm. but I feel that way. So I'm like, okay, I can't trust yeah. myself. Yeah. But if I if I go ahead and go to the Lord mm -hmm. and I use His Word, mm -hmm. is that and that, just that's what David did, sing and go to the go to right. the Lord in in uh, in His Word, that that will uplift us and change it. Does. It does. Yeah. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy, mm -hmm. and when we learn to love righteousness and hate evil, mm -hmm. we will have joy above. Mm -hmm people around us who are engulfing themselves in the evil and not yeah. choosing to love what's right. Mm -hmm. And so there's things that we can do to be joyful mm -hmm. despite the circumstances. Yeah. What happens though if if somebody you love, if, if they're making a bad choice, what, what do you, how would you go about helping them? Well, I would pray because there is so much power in prayer. And then I would come alongside of them just in, and let them know that I'm there for them. Mm -hmm. And then I would try to do everything that I could to bring them to the next level. Right. But it, sometimes it's just getting out of the way and letting God work in their lives mm -hmm. and letting them know that you're going to, carry their problem with them. Compassion mm -hmm. is feeling your pain on my heart right. and that alone will strengthen the people around you. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. One of the things too that you talk about is how we have to choose to work on our marriage. We can either choose to work or hardly work. Right, right. If you're <laughs> going to enjoy the fruits one. of your labor, that mm -hmm. means there's going to be labor. Mm -hmm. And working on your marriage is something you should be doing every day. Yeah. It's not like a plot of land where you can, it's, it's like a plot of land. If you leave it, sure. you can't go back next week. You'll have to pull weeds. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you have to work it every day. Right. That is so a great, a lot of good example that is. <laughs> right. That's not really talked a lot. This is really great. Thank it's you. wonderful. Thanks Thank so you so much for coming and just giving us just a lot of tools and mm -hmm. and just knowledge for us to impact right. our, our marriages for the marathon. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's yeah. great to be here. Thank you. Later on Real Life, Don sits down with Bishop Derek Greer of Grace Church to discuss his newest book, Another 60 Minutes of Wisdom, Growth on the Go. Pastor Pete Giacalone continues his teaching series on the Word for Today. And coming up next, the teens deal with the risks of pregnancy on Today's Girls. That's next on Real Life. this Wednesday coming up. And we have our first ever male guest. No. Hello. No, oh, we're yeah. Women at Sisters. Author Jay Payleitner is coming to tell us 52 things that every husband needs from their wives. Really? Like what? Like sex. What? Don't miss it this Wednesday coming up. Really? We're going to talk about I it? I know. Are you excited? Oh. <laughs> As a mom and grandma, I pray for my family every day. I want them to experience God's best and stay true to Him, especially in life's hard times. But sometimes I don't know how to pray for them. That's why I'm so thankful for Dawn's new devotional, which my friends at Cornerstone sent to me with my monthly donation. I love reading and journaling in it for my morning quiet times and then while watching real life, learning more about the Bible and the prophetic significance of each day. This devotional has really enhanced my prayer life. I know better how to intercede for my family. December Partners, we want to thank you by giving you Don Black's latest book, God's Word for Real Life. With your monthly gift of any size, 
Each day corresponds with our daily Bible verse shared on the program. Call us today. We want to connect with you. Well, I am excited to see Dawn's new book that's coming out. It's such a nice offer to give this December. Um, so on TV and in the news, you probably have heard about the rise of pregnancy among teens. You might even know someone who is a teen mom. How can we help them in this emotional and life-changing time? Well, that is the topic that Terry Squires and the girls are dealing with this week on Today's Girls. Did you know that three out of 10 teen girls will become pregnant before the age of 20? That's about 700,000 teen pregnancies each year, according to some statistics. And in today's world, it's not that big of a deal. Some teens actually think it's cool to get pregnant. Some don't even try to avoid it. It's interesting that we have reality shows like Teen Mom, 16 and Pregnant, that create celebrity teen moms. These producers of these shows will tell you that their shows actually help teens make wise choices when it comes to sex and having babies. I'm not too convinced since one of their celebrity teen moms has already started a career in the pornography industry and a few have been in rehab and jail. It's not real life. Teen pregnancy changes lives. Let's watch together to see if Kayla's plans are put on hold. Cross country season is beginning and Kayla is at early morning practice before school starts. I'm late for everything. Practice. This can't be happening to me. I feel so sick. Kayla! Oh, I'm so stoked that you're here already. We're gonna have so much fun. At least I can join the cross-country team now that I'm grounded for four years. Ambria is going to try out for the team because she thinks it will be a great way to revitalize her damaged social life. Perfect. <laughs> Kayla, what are you doing? Are you meditating before practice? Does that help you run faster? Are you serious? Are you always this cherry in the morning? And who even uses the word stoked these days? <sighs> what? Oh, did you hear about Madison? Maybe. She is my best friend, Ambria. I know. How many best friends can you have? What about Madison? She's on drugs, and they rushed her to the hospital, and they ran a bunch of lab tests, and the drugs showed up in her lab tests, and now she's in really, really big trouble. That is old news. Everybody knows about it, and she's not on drugs. All right, we're late. Come on. We gotta hit the weights. You don't need your bag. <laughs> oh, I forgot my ponytail. It's in here somewhere. Early pregnancy test. What is this even doing in my bag? This isn't my bag. This is yours. Kayla, are you pregnant? Shh. Will you be quiet? No. Then what is this doing in your bag? You can trust me, Kayla. I won't tell anyone. Maybe you can have two best friends. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. But if you tell anyone, I mean anyone, your time here is over. All right, you can trust me. I promise I won't tell anybody. Okay, well, I don't know if I'm pregnant or not. I don't even know if I'm a virgin anymore. I know I sound crazy, but do you remember the night of Jessica's party? <laughs> How could I forget? It's the night my social life ended, remember? Yeah, well, me and Matthew got back together, and 
I think we did it. Well, I'm not sure. Look, Kayla, I know that I can be gullible and naive sometimes, but honestly, like, come on. How can you not know if you, you know? Look, things were out of hand that night. We started to, but then I said stop because I wasn't ready. But it was close enough where anything could have happened. I just don't know. Does that make any sense? You know, I have read things about this online. You can get pregnant even if you didn't go all the way. It just, it depends on how far you did go and how close. Like, how close? Really close. But we stopped. Well, have you talked to him about it? No. I broke up with him the day after. He's tried to talk to me, but I'm done with him. And now I'm late. Late for what? My period. Look, if I were you, I would take the test, and then I would talk to Matthew about it. And if it ends up that you are pregnant, then we'll figure this out together. All right, I'll do it tonight when we get home from practice. Come on. Yes. <laughs> wow, you actually called me first. That's really cool. Yeah, there's all good news over my way. I'm so happy I've seen Miss Monthly. It's ridiculous. But I still took the test. One line. One line. You're going to have to tell me what that means. Negative. I'm not pregnant. Oh, that's awesome. But have you talked to Matthew about it? No. Do I need to? It's really opened my eyes. I don't think he's the one for me, and I don't want to risk making a mistake. I think I should wait till I'm married. It's what I really believe. See? Everything works out. But, you know, you should really go see a doctor about your being late and stuff and your fainting. Yeah, already got that covered. My mom made a doctor's appointment next week. She thinks I might be pushing myself a little too hard in cross country. That's why I missed my period last month, so I guess that happens sometimes with athletes, you know? Wow. Jessica's party really messed up our lives. I think we should mess up hers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, one more thing. What? You never really did answer my question. How many best friends can you have? One, Ambria. Maybe two. <laughs> That's what I thought. You, right now, may have a teen daughter or a granddaughter who is pregnant and are struggling on how to help her through this challenging time. Initially, it's normal to feel shocked, upset, or crushed about the news, especially if you've had great dreams for your teen. But your dream for her isn't over. The Lord still holds her dreams in his hands. So here are a few thoughts. She needs your love, support, and forgiveness. Put your own feelings aside and let her know that you'll be there for her through all the changes. Seek godly counsel. This will help all of you as you go through the emotional roller coaster in decision making in the months ahead. Let her know that God is not done using her to impact the lives of others. She is still his child and he loves her. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and, and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Be encouraged today. There is hope, there is grace, and there is love. And God is ready to use you to help her. Remember, her baby just might be the next great young woman or man to reach millions with the message of Jesus. You'll want to join me next week. There's a new girl in town, a mean one, and her name is Jessica.
<laughs> Terry, I so appreciate these segments because I think that for a mom or a grandma who mm -hmm. gets that news that the daughter is pregnant, that Absolutely. is such a shock. And sometimes mm -hmm. the first reaction is just the freak out on Absolutely. them. But mm -hmm. it's so important to remember that loving them through this really does um, it's so much more effective in helping right. them. And I, I have a couple friends personally who had babies as teenagers okay. and oh, to see their life now and mm -hmm. the story of redemption mm -hmm. that has taken place is incredible. That's awesome. And that's something mm -hmm. I think that we need to remember about the fact that if you do know somebody or you have a loved one that is pregnant and they are a teen, mm -hmm. I think one of the tendencies is that we do a knee-jerk reaction. Right. And, and today's girls, that's what Terry was sharing about, is that we don't. Mm -hmm. We don't do a, a reaction. Yeah. We take it in prayer and that's love right. and support so that's that right. we can have... Um, because God, God, it's just a different path, but God's Absolutely. with them during that time. And we have these great fact sheets, mm -hmm. so we want to encourage you. If you want some information about Today's Girls, are always great segments, and you want, um, please go to our website at ctvn.org to request your fact sheet, or call us at 1-888-665-4483. And we'll be right back. Connect online with Cornerstone Network. Find us at Facebook.com slash Cornerstone TV and click the like button. You'll see show updates, exclusive videos, inspiring scripture, and lots of behind the scenes photos. If you have a question or a comment, post it on our page. We want to hear from you. Connect online with Cornerstone at Facebook.com slash Cornerstone TV. We're so excited to tell you what's coming up on this Saturday's block party. That's right, Tom. We're getting you in the Christmas spirit with a special showing of the University of Mobile's Christmas Spectacular. If you love Christmas music, you're not going to want to miss this. And our feature film for the evening is What If? A story about a business tycoon who gets a second chance at his life's calling. Don't miss the Cornerstone block party this Saturday from 6, six to 9. nine. I rededicated my life to the Lord by watching Christian television. I was backslidden. I would not go to church. And I turned the TV on to Christian television. And he said, if you want to give your life you to the Lord. Jesus your Lord, ask him to forgive you of your sins. I was trying to get to the television to turn the channel because that's not what I wanted to hear. But the Holy Spirit overwhelmed me in that moment. And I fell on my knees and rededicated my life to the Lord. It transformed my life. Everybody doesn't go to church, but everybody watches TV. And at any given moment, people want to hear some good news. They want to hear about something that's going to transform them, something that's going to change them, something that's going to deliver them, something that's going to help them. And that's what Cornerstone Television preaches. It preaches the good news of the gospel. Amen. It's time now for our daily study of God's Word. Our teacher this week is Pastor Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. His message today is called God's Grand Aton Announcement, and he shares God's Word with us now on The Word for Today. The title of my message today is God's grand announcement. I remember many years ago when my son was born, my father threw a party back in Detroit, Michigan. My dad threw a party. Uh, there was close to 100 people at the house. He was so proud that his grandson was born, and not only that, he was named after my father. You see, when God announced the birth of Jesus, it was a grand announcement. Now you have to look at the time. See, Right after the book of Malachi, we have about 400 years of silence. There's no word from God whatsoever. Then all of a sudden you have angels appearing, angels going to Mary, angels going to Joseph, angels appearing to the shepherds. This is God's grand announcement. But what is God's grand announcement? You see, his announcement to you and his announcement to me, first of all, God with us. Come on, would you say that with me? 
God with us. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name, and I love this, Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. You have the right, because of God's wonderful gift given to the world, this Christmas, you have the right to open that gift of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the very right to call him Emmanuel. Do you realize, because of God's grand announcement, you can declare, God is with me. Oh, I love that. Because when you know that God is with you, then you know that you're not alone. Yes, some at this particular time of the year are very discouraged. Some are going through depression. Some are missing loved ones. I have loved ones who are now in heaven, and I miss them dearly. But I know that I know that I know, as I face today, God is with me. Come on, say it with me. God is with me. And also because of the grand announcement of God, we know that God is for us. Not only is he with me, but he's for me. He's with me and for me. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24, it says, For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Think about it. The gift, Emmanuel, to us, now sits at the right hand of the Father for us. Again, let me say that again. Christ, who was given to us, now sits at the right hand of the Father for us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, it says this, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I really don't know what you're going through. I care, but I don't know what you're going through. But you know what? If God be for you today, then tell me who can be against you. Yes, God is for you. It may seem like everything is closing in, but I want to encourage you. God is not only with you, but he's for you. And then finally, because of the grand announcement of God, not only is he with us, not only is he for us, but God is in us. Let me read to you 1 John chapter 4 and verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So as we look at more scripture in Colossians chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, it says this, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, in Christ Jesus. Now here we go. God's grand announcement. For unto us a child is born. Because of that grand announcement, you can live with the hope and in the hope that God is with you, God is for you, and God is in you. And because of that, you have nothing to fear. We'll see you tomorrow. Today we were blessed with the music of Grace Church worship team. Bishop Derek uh, Greyer is the founding pastor of Grace Church in Dumfries, Virginia. Dumfries, Virginia. It's fastest growing, one of the fastest growing churches in the United States. United pastor, States, yeah. we are so glad that you're here with us. Great to be here. First time here. First time. Well, we, we always love to have men of God and women of God that are anointed by the Spirit to come and share with our family. Sure. What's happening in Virginia? What? Well, uh, God's doing a lot of wonderful things. Uh, we happen to be, as you said, one of the fast growing churches in the country, but that really wasn't our goal. Uh, our goal is to build big, build big people. And as we build big people, church kind of comes alongside. But um, our goal is not the big church thing, it's the people thing. And as long as we keep that a priority, I think we'll continue to grow. Now, what, what part of the state is Dumfries? Dumfries Outside there. D.C. So it's in the, in the suburbs of D.C.? Yeah, it's two miles from Quantico Marine Bay. 
Marine oh, okay. Base, yeah. All righty. Yeah. We're old Virginians. My wife and I met in Virginia. Oh, that's good. We, we have a common background. We, we do in our regent days. Yeah. We both graduated from that's Regent right. University. Yeah. <clears throat> I was a little earlier than you. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a few weeks earlier yeah, than sir. you. Well, tell, tell me, Pastor, about why did you go into the church ministry? Well, I gave my life to the Lord when I was 20. Um, I didn't come from a Christian background. Uh, I had an encounter with the Lord, actually, in my dorm room. I was studying the Quran. I was planning to become a Muslim. Um, however, Jesus showed up in my room, <laughs> changed my life. It took me about a year, though, to give my life to the Lord. I studied the Bible, and I, I, didn't, I didn't come to Christ because I was real interested in the church. I didn't come to Christ because it was my background, because I fell in love with Jesus. Uh, when I read the Bible, he began to leap off the pages, and he became a hero. And, uh, his character, his, his strength. Um, he was, you know, at first I, was, I, I read the Bible, I said, well, he's a great man. And then I said, well, maybe he's a prophet. But then I, I began to see he's much more than a man. And um, it wasn't just, you know, my hero. Uh, he began to receive my worship and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. How old were you? I was 20 years old. In, the, in, in college? In college. Going yeah. to, uh, George, where were you going to school? Howard University. In, in, in Washington. Studying business, but I, I was very politically involved at that time. And uh, that's one of the, the attraction to Islam at that particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, Jesus uh, uh, totally transformed my life through that, that single encounter. It's, it's, it's an amazing, the way he takes our lives from where we thought we were going yeah and redirects us. Absolutely. And now you pastor a church, a large church yeah. in the same area. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever thought? No. Back in the day? No, no, no. Um, you know, we, we're talking a little bit about the success of the church, but the reality is I've learned to fail well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I began pastoring at the, the university. Actually, I was a campus minister. But then I went on to 14th Street, and after a couple of years, we failed there. So, uh, you know, uh, my wife and I were funding the ministry. Most of the folks that came were homeless, and, and, and it was just we didn't have the funds. Uh, so I failed at the university. Uh, uh, my mouth was a little bit too big at the university, so they, they put me out. Uh, <laughs> then 14th Street, uh, I failed there again. And at that point, I said, well, Lord, you must not have called me. I must have misconstrued, misheard. Maybe, you know, I, 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 I'm going back to, to business, and uh, this, this obviously is not for me. But for about a year, I couldn't sleep. Um, it's just this nagging thing on the inside. Literally? I, yeah, yeah. Um, near the end, it got more and more intense. And I finally just, ha, Lord, okay, I'm, I'm going to go out there and we're, we're going to do this thing. So we started in high school with 12 people. And uh, then actually, to, to, to really be honest about the story, uh, about 18 months into that church split, so I, I failed at you know, college and I failed at 14th Street. And then I said, Lord, I'm going to do this because I really believe it's you. And then 18 months, the church split. Mm. Then we were down to about 30 people. We grew to a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. Then we, uh, from there, we uh, uh, built out a condominium unit, uh, which was in Dumfries, which is a more depressed area in Virginia. And uh, we moved in there. We had a couple hundred people, but then we shrunk to about 30. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it was a $1.5 million project. And, uh, you know, my, my thoughts were, here, here we go again. You know, I failed here, I failed here, I failed here, I failed here. And the scripture the Lord put on my heart surprised me. It, it was in Romans where the Bible says, Abraham faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Mm -hmm. And I felt the Lord saying to my heart, Derek, I need you to face the facts. I was like, what? what? Face the facts. Okay, the facts are, Father, I, I can't do this. Father, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have the, the capacity to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. As soon as I said I can't, something rose up on the inside. It was a special help. I knew I could. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's often a place God has to get us when we realize we can't. That's right. And when I realized that I couldn't, I gave up. I, I gave, I've given up a few times, but I mean, I guess this time God was finally satisfied the degree. I finally realized, you know what, Derek, you cannot do this. Um, and at that point we began to grow and that was probably about seven years ago. So we really grew over the last uh, five to seven years from uh, 30 people to now four to 5,000 wow. people. Wow, what a testimony. Yeah. How many times and how many years did you go through those cycles of failure? <laughs> that, uh, shoot, was it? Uh, I would say from, yeah, I, about 10. About 10, 10, years. Years, 10 years. And you mentioned your wife. Yes. So you were married. Yes. Have family? 
Yeah, I have two boys, uh, two teenagers. The oldest is 17. The, the youngest is in 10th grade. He's 15. So you were a father and a husband going through the right. cycle of start, stop, start, stop, yeah. fall down, get back up, fall down, get back up. What kept you going? What was the, what was the motivation or the energy to keep going? Well, financially, by God's grace, you know, uh, I, I was a good investor, and that helped us financially. But, you know, when we were in the high school and we went through the split, I remember uh, one morning waking up and said, I don't want my boys to be like me. Oh. And, and I don't want them to know this God mm. that seems to, God, what is this? Mm. Uh, and, and I remember around that time I bought a poster. And I don't remember all the statistics, but it was a, uh, a Michael Jordan poster. Mm -hmm. He said something along the lines of, um, I lost over 6,000 games in my life. Uh, over 300 times I was trusted to, to, to make the winning shot, but I, but I missed. And he went on and on about his stats. But he said, the reason I succeed is because I fail. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me. And what I learned to do was fail well. <laughs> and and at, at some point you start saying, well, you know what, this doesn't work. And this is what God's hand on. But, but even beyond that. One of the biggest things that I, I think a minister has to do is learn to get over themselves. Get over themselves. Get over themselves. Mm -hmm. Ministry wasn't about me. It wasn't mm -hmm. about my ambition. It wasn't about, uh, you know, me trying to necessarily grow a church as much as me serving God and helping people. And whenever you get that mixed up and it becomes about your numbers, it becomes about, you know what, I told people I was a minister. I have nothing to show for it. I'm in the middle of that. Yeah. And it had to right. become about the Lord. You know, there's, there, there's, there's a leader, a church leader watching the program right now, Pastor. They're, they're watching yeah. and they're in a cycle of that failure. Yeah. They're in that fail, get up, fail, get up. Maybe, they, maybe you're in the yeah. fail mode where you've reached the bottom. You think it's the bottom. Yeah. Would, you, would you reach out sure. to that person sure. and give them a camera and there you go. Sure. You know, the way to the promised land is always through the wilderness. Uh, even Jesus himself, before he went into ministry, the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness where he was tempted and he was hungry. And that's, that's all part of the process. God has to help us get over us. And we have to learn to submit even in the difficult times before God can really use us in ministry. Again, as a pastor, we make ministry so much about, you know, our goals and, and our agenda, but it's really all about him. Mm -hmm. And as we keep Jesus first, I really believe that, that you could turn your situation around. Now, you may not have a, a 10,000 member church, but the bottom line is you just need to do what God's assigned you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's all that you're going to be held accountable for. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super important. I, I'd love to pray for folks. If, well, if I was going to say, let's do, would you lead a prayer? Sure. And I want to encourage you, call 888-665-4483. If you're a leader, you're in a, in a place, you, don't, you know what, you don't even have to tell us your name. We want, to, we want to make it as easy, but we want to stand in agreement with you. So if you'll pray, I call, we'll pray for you. And then at the end of this program, we're going to have a prayer time here. And Pastor Kemp will be out here with us All on right, a prayer we'll time. That. We'll lay hands on these, sure. on these people. But call the number now. But would you lead us in a prayer right now? Sure. Would you pray with me? And in fact, I want to pray for you as, as, you, as you just bow your heads in your home. Father, I thank you for the person that I believe you had tuned into this program. Father, they are in a wilderness experience and they're looking up saying, why? Well, mm -hmm. the reality is your word says, take up your cross and follow you. Yes, and getting over self is a big part of that. And a lot of folks don't want to hear that. But the reality is, mm -hmm. in order for us to serve others better in the image and, and character of Jesus, our motivations have to be right. Yes, so, Father, I ask that you purify the motives of all watching. Father, show us ourselves. Help us get over ourselves yes, so we can be better servants and ministers of your son. And we'll give you all the honor Hallelujah. and all the glory for what you accomplished. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, brother or sister, I just want to say don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. You can fail and you can fall, but get back up and come again. We're in a short season here. I like the football analogy. We're in, a, we're in the uh, red zone. That's right. You know, in the red zone on two-minute warning. That's really where we are. And we as the church need you. We need you. We need you to stand in your calling, in your gifting, no matter where it is, no matter what it is, and build the church up. That's what we need. So call us, 888-665-4483. We'll pray with you a prayer of faith for a new beginning. Start this new, next year. Wouldn't have to be tremendous to start the next year. Yeah with a new anointing, uh, be beautiful. filled with the Holy Spirit, ready to go out and face the devil. You know, one point in my life, I remember the Spirit of God saying to me, son, you're too full of yourself for me to really fill you with your spirit. 
in my spirit. So he wants us to empty ourselves. So Amen. thankful, brother. Bless you. So glad you're with us. Thanks for coming. You'll come back with us again. Oh, beautiful. Uh, we'll, we'll be back in just a moment to do the prayer that I just promised. But first, let's take a look at what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life, singer and violinist Jean Watson shares her musical gifts and passion for helping others. My on Real Life Today, Pete Giacalone continues his teaching series on the Word for Today. And don't miss author Ian McCormick giving his testimony on a supernatural after-death experience and his new mission from God. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Well, we're back to pray, and I, I just feel in my spirit that there's somebody watching this, that this is your time. This is your time for change. Don't let it slip by. Don't let the devil steal it from you because it's what he wants to do. This is your time for change. Mm -hmm. So make the phone call. We've got some praise reports and prayer requests. Uh, Celine called. She's had a bad toothache. She called to have prayer, and the toothache left completely wow. and has yeah. never returned. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. God. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the great That's physician. True. You know, he must be the great dentist, too. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Terry, what's oh, your prayer? Well, you know, I have some prayer requests for um, just that someone has a test coming up, and we just really pray and believe um, for <laughs> healing. And um, for uh, Charlotte, she's having surgery right now, so we're praying for you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one really touched me because it's a mother calling in for prayer for her three sons, Derek, Dustin, and Douglas, um, praying favor in their new jobs and prosperity. And there's so much power in a mother's prayers. And so I really connect my heart with you today in praying for your children. And I'm going to pray for Joan Eric, a left shoulder healing. Uh, and you also have high diabetes. and. God has healed me, and I believe that He can heal you as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, put, let's place them here. Mm -hmm. If you guys will join me in prayer, in unity, yes, you know. Lord. And if you're that person who needs to start again, That's don't right. don't let this. You call us even when we go off the air. Call us, and you can you can start again. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is when we celebrate the birthday of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for your gifts. Lord, we pray for every one of these people who've called in the healing requests the financial requests, Lord, the relationship mm -hmm. request. Lord, we thank you that you healed that sister's tooth. Yeah, Praise God. Mm -hmm. Lord, you, that's, that's a big deal when your tooth hurts. Lord, thank you that you care about the, the, the small things and the big things. Lord, as we go into Christmas, we want to go in with, with rejoicing and gladness, and we do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thankful that you were joined us today. We're going to close. Pastor, thank you, brother. A pleasure. God bless you. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, thank you, Anna. And of Always course, a thank you, Terry. You're We're going to close the program with uh, the, the team from Pastors Church, Grace Church Worship Team, as they sing, We Honor You. Awesome. Jesus, you're worthy of all our praise. You're marvelous. Sing marvelous. We worship you, God. You're marvelous, holy, sovereign, royalty, we live to worship you in spirit and truth, cleanse us, we pray, as we live. Your name in red.